下上面，等一下上来。Welcome back to Doggy Style. I'm with Tony in your store Doggy House. We've already been to your Kennel Paradise Hotel, which was phenomenal. So tell me about how you started Doggy House. Uh, when, when I finished my work at uh, Europe over six years, back to China, I think I should do my own business. And I love pets. That's why I opened the pet shop. That's simple. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. And was it easy for you? I mean, you're going from a cooking background, yes. now you're in the dog background, yes. so it must have been very foreign to you. There must have been so many things. Yes, it's difficult at the start. Uh, I study very hard. Actually, every every day I must study like uh, English and uh, about pet uh, until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Wow, that's every amazing. Day. And morning I come here work. Uh, around 8 o'clock, uh, I study until 3 or 4 o'clock, every day I only sleep 5 or 6 hours. Why do you usually sleep more? Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky if you sleep more. <laughs> um, but I mean, that the dedication and, and opening something like this, when you feel something so passionate in yep. your heart to do it, which you obviously did, Yes. Because you were very famous, you were, you were an incredible chef before. Yes. Um, now, opening the pet store in China, we're in Shanghai by the way, yes. um, was it difficult, the process, or was that easy? Mm, it's easy, not difficult. Good. Yeah, it's easy. So that made it worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, we don't need uh, any, like a license, or, because in China only need the sell dogs, need the license. Right. Uh, the pet store, you don't need license, just normal, just normal license. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And how did you feel seven years ago to now? I mean, was it as busy before? Uh, were there as many customers? Did did as many people have dogs before as they do now? Uh, there's a lot of dogs because here's the like uh, expat communicating. Expat, by the way, means foreigners, non-Chinese people that leave their own countries and come to China. Yeah. So here have has a lot of dogs. And because foreigners, they bring their dog from their country. They live in here around the three or five years. So they need their dogs and their dogs need them. Oh, that's so the nice. dogs come here and here have many dogs when we open the store. Yeah, yeah which, is, which is great. And it, it, does it get busier every year? Are more people getting dogs now or? Um, it's almost then because uh, the foreigners, they will come here and they will go back. Right. So, so yeah. Only these dogs. So number of these dogs. So some dogs leaving, some dogs coming. Now, what about the Chinese people that live in China in Shanghai proper? Shanghai proper. Do they have dogs? Yeah, they have dogs a lot. Uh, most of them is the small dog, like a poodle, like a small bichon frisbee, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, they're easier to handle. So yeah. they think, although they do require a lot of exercise and attention as well, though. Yes. Um, and. You also have a grooming salon. Yes. How, how about that? Are you very busy in the grooming salon there? Yeah, we are busy. We are busy and uh, every day around the 20 dogs. 20 dogs? Yeah. That's a lot of dogs. That's yes. awesome. And how much do you usually charge on average for a groom, groom here? Uh, like a 10, 10 pounds dog. Yeah. Uh, I think around the 80 or 100. 
wow. some lock air, shock that's, air. That's yeah. awesome. People at home, that's about 16, 18 American dollars. So that's uh, that's incredible. We pay up to a hundred dollars for yep. a ten pound dog in some places. But, but I think it's too cheap, too cheap for the hard working with the pets. It's too cheap because we we cannot pay more salary for the for the groomers. Mm -hmm. If I can charge more, I can pay more for them. Right. It's impossible in China, in Shanghai. It's almost all the store the same. The price grooming. Yeah, price they're same. used to paying a price, and that's yeah. basically. Yeah, we already be higher. You know, some some store only thirty. Thirty RMB for a shave and nails and everything. For, for only for shower and the the basque grooming. Yeah. Not 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 cutting the hair. Oh, okay then. I guess it's kind of relative, really. I mean, when you think about it, thirty dollars for a bath at home, thirty RMB here, a hundred dollars. You know, hard hundred RMB is about a hundred dollars at home. So it's it's probably the same. I mean, yes. it's the same language, different yes. amounts, which is very normal, considering. So, how do you feel about dog ownership? And what you're doing in Shanghai, you've probably experienced so many things, yep. having your kennel and, and people coming in and out of the store. Yep. What what do you strive to do? What's your goal? Ah, uh, in China, uh, before the the dog is not a pet. Few, I think ten years before, I think uh, it's ten years before it start, the mm -hmm. dog become a pet in the home. Uh, before it's just uh, the dog on the street and just a guard the, the garden uh, guard, guard the home. Mm -hmm. that, that's guard dog and you can see very little dog they can bark very very hard if some strangers come to the garden in the normal Chinese home mm -hmm. like uh, in, the, in the in the form you mm -hmm. can see that and uh, but now it's the pet so it's diff it's big different and it's a big change um, our goal is want to show how to treat the dog on the right way, how to train your dog to be a well-behaved pet dog at home. It's, it's different than before. So if the dog is a guard dog, they can live in outside in the garden. They can pee everywhere. Mm -hmm. But at home, they cannot pee. Right. They must go somewhere that the owner wants them to do. So they cannot chew the sofa, they cannot chew the furniture, but outside the dog can chew everything. Actually, mm -hmm. then, so we want to teach the dog, teach the people to fix all the problems of home. Actually, people buy a puppy back home, they won't happy. So if they don't know how to treat the dog, everything will be messed. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Proper training is imperative, yeah. uh, without a doubt. Uh, and now that's why there's such a, an influx of trainers worldwide teaching people how to own yep. an animal yep. and make it a pet, something you'll be proud of, where there's a mutual respect, yes. right, which is very important. Now, I noticed though that you don't sell dogs in your store. Yes. Why is that? Because everybody else in China does. It's absolutely horrific as far as I'm concerned, but let's find out what Tony <laughs> feels. <laughs> Actually, selling the pets, it's make money. It make money. But uh, it's my know, my experience, uh, I don't think uh, most of the breeders or the breeding kennels mm -hmm. doing good things for the dogs. Um, I think the dogs will be suffer at the boarding, breeding kennel or the, with the breeder. Mm -hmm. Some breeder, not all, not all, actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't want to take that risk to sell this dog to the people. And uh, these dogs, these puppies, they have a lot of problems, so it will make the problem for the new family, and the family will throw out the dog one day, mm -hmm. so the dog become a street dog. Mm -hmm. I don't want that happen. And you know, our people eat the dog. Then maybe this dog go to the dinner table. That's right. So that what I um, I don't want to see it. So okay, you. I just uh, take my responsibility. I don't sell dog. We only wanted people to adopt the dog, the street dog, what we saved. Which is a nice thing, which is always a good thing. Uh, adopting dogs is always a better way to go. I mean, we, we've seen it, I've seen it. 
um, you know, we walk into the markets, into the pet shops, you have puppies that are now four, five, six, seven months, and they've been living in these cages all the time. Yep. So you're right, what do you do with a dog that doesn't know where to pee and poo, yes. or, you know, is not socialized properly? And this habit is very, very hard to be changed. You must be professional, and you must pay a lot of attention to your dog. You must spend time, you must cost money for the trainer. So that's a lot. That's too much. That's yeah. Much. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's much better if you're going to get a dog, especially here. Um, although you don't have any shelters in China, we know that. Um, yes. So if somebody wanted to rescue a dog or a yes. cat, um, where would they go to do that? I know you rescue dogs and yes. cats, so they could come and adopt them from you. Yes. But other than you, what, what would somebody? How would somebody find a, a rescue dog? Um, if people just go street, they found a dog. <laughs> just have a walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many. There's, there's too many. Yeah. So they will take the dog back home, and they will do the automatic treatment. There's few uh, animal rescue group in China in Shanghai. So they will have the uh, adoption day. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, they will have the adoption day. Okay. So everyone can bring the dog to the adoption day to see who is love my dog. So this dog can be available for adoption. And these dogs are all must be uh, vaccinated, warmed. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the dog is already adult, the dog need to be fixed. Right, which brings us to our next yeah. topic, the, the, the neutering, spay and neutering issue yes. here in China. As we've discussed in other shows, um, you know, a lot of people are not doing it. Most people don't. I know the government is now trying to support that a little bit, yeah. okay, um, which is great. So, how do you feel about that? You know, the, the spaying and neutering and the whole, the myth around dogs do not have to be. Yep. Uh, first of all, Oh, I think uh, the neutering is good for the dog's healthy. This is first of all. And the others, we can control the dog. Don't be a bad dog. Mm -hmm. Because the sometimes if the male dog didn't be fixed, they will be aggression. Right. They were fighting with other dogs, even bite the people. This is dog, uh, sometimes the hormone control everything. Of course. Yeah, so, Just like us. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that's better to, to do it. That's better to do it. And the, the last, uh, you can control the number of the street dogs. Yeah. Yeah. And this is this is the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, control. You know, having mutual respect for each other, controlling the population on the planet, and basically having a more harmonious life with nature. Yes. And, and not seeing so much abuse and and horrible things that happen out there to these poor living creatures that they just keep getting bred and killed and bred and killed and that's just bad karma as we say in in, uh, in our Buddhist language. Yeah, there's there's life. Tony, I feel like you're my brother from another mother and father. <laughs> but you know, and you, you share so many of my the same views as I have, and we come from such extreme parts of different parts of the world. Um, and it's such an honor to meet you. I just I love what you're doing, and I I wish you a million years and a million lifetimes of of success. Thank and thank you for sharing all your time with me and, and all your secrets. Thank you. Your ancient Chinese secrets. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. Tony. you.